Hello there, everybody! This is Silent Mist, and welcome back to the vlog! <sighs> Today was a pretty crappy day at work. Um, it was just long, arduous, and just a long day. Um, however, things are looking better now that I got home. First of all, I got my paycheck today. Actually, I got this week and last week's paycheck, uh, because of a bit of a mix-up I ended up getting two at once. Actually, no, it wasn't because of a mix-up, it was because I wasn't there to pick it up. So I ended up getting two paychecks at once, which is really nice, because it's always nice to see the fruits of your labor finally in front of you. So, that's good. And, um, on top of that, well, today... My new, new motherboard arrived. Um, there's the old, new motherboard, and the old, old motherboard is just installed in there. I have my old, uh, the original P7P55D, um, is currently installed in my desktop. That's the one that isn't working as far as I can tell. And this one just got in today. Actually, it was pretty much hand-delivered to me because, um, I ended up finding a really good deal on this motherboard on Overclocked.net's forums for the free and for sale. There was actually a guy that was really close to me. Um, he lived in Marlboro. Marlboro, Marlboro, I don't even know how to pronounce that place. Um, which is, like, within a half an hour of here, so he dropped that off today. And I got a really good deal on this motherboard considering what it is. Um, I got the Asus Sabertooth X58. I don't think I said that. Did I say that? I don't know. But, um... Uh, I got this thing for 150 bucks, which is a pretty good deal considering that it is one of the higher end X50, X58 motherboards that are out there. And by higher end, I just mean it has a couple of features that not all boards do, including, uh, well, what is really nice is that it has eight SATA ports, even though two of them are, two, these two are SATA 3 instead of SATA 2, which these six are. And normally that would be a wonderful thing, however, before, or on the X58 chipset, SATA 3 and PCI Express 3.0 aren't exactly the best of things because the processor itself doesn't natively support it, so it's all done on the chipset, which is a little bit slower. So I'm not entirely sure how well those are going to work. I'm probably just going to throw the two uh, three terabyte, the two two terabyte drives onto there because they're SATA 3. Why not have it work nicely? But yeah, so um. Got the motherboard, which is good. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that motherboard over there. I did get a full refund for it, which is really nice. The guy also said that don't bother sending it back. There's nothing I can do with it. So, I don't know what I can do with that. But I just installed the processor in here uh, a couple minutes ago, right before I started vlogging. And I'll be swapping these motherboards out as soon as I do something. One last thing on my desktop. Um, so, so far so good. One really good thing that happened today was I managed to sell my graphics card, my 680, for much higher than what one could normally get. Um, I found a way to make these things retain their value really well, which is really nice. So I'll be able to get a new graphics card. I'm probably going to get either an R9 290 or I could, re I could feasibly swap it out with a 780 Ti, but I don't know if I want to. Um... The reason why I want to go to an R9-270 instead of a, two, a 780, obviously the 780 Ti is going to be a fair bit better than the 290, is that in the future, I might throw another 290 in there. Um, also, 290s have a tendency to be able to be unlocked into 290Xs, which would be really cool if I could do that. Um, but mainly, it's just, I don't think I need a 780 Ti. Uh, the only thing that I am a little hesitant on doing this is that... I won't be able to use CUDA on anything AMD flavored. CUDA is an NVIDIA exclusive thing, so if I do decide to go AMD, then I have to say goodbye to CUDA. Am I willing to do that? Possibly, because OpenCL, in my opinion, is a fair bit faster and, well, AMD graphics card of similar tiers to NVIDIA ones are quite a bit better at compute stuff. So, in doing video editing, especially if I do start, if I start doing stuff in OS X, it would probably be much more beneficial to have a, a 290 over a 780. Also, the 290 is just about half the price of a 780, so sometime in the future I could definitely get a second one and throw it into Crossfire. The only problem with that is that if I do that, I will definitely need a new power supply because a 700 watt power supply is not going to cut it. But um, I actually got a question in one of the comments the other day. And it was people asking me, hey, Drew, why are you going with X58 as your platform? That's really old. It's a six-year-old platform. Actually, I think it's seven years old now. 2007 or 2008? I don't know which of those years it came out in, but it came out in one of those years. It is a very old platform. However, in my opinion, it is the single most... It is the best aged platform out of any one of the platform Out of any processor line there is right now. Um, minus... Uh, I might not be able to say that. AM3 and AM2 might hold 
a candle light to that. The only thing is, I went to X58 because you can purchase six core Xeons on eBay for very, very low prices. I got a Xeon, which is the equivalent of an, a, 9, a 980X or a 970, which are Hexacore Intel, uh, Intel Core i7s for 60 bucks. Or 80 bucks, sorry. I've seen them as low as like 50 or 60 bucks. But I got one for 80 bucks, which is a fantastic deal considering that these things can be overclocked like champions. This thing right here comes in stock at 2.6 gigahertz, but I would be surprised if I couldn't get it up to 4.2 gigahertz. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a cherry picking and it's a bit of luck. I have to hope that I got a good chip, but it does seem like as a whole, they overclocked well over 4 gigahertz, which is good because in looking at uh, online benchmarks, they are actually quite comparable to the X79, which is the next, the newer tier of Intel processors. They perform very similarly, albeit a little, uh, yeah, a little slower clock for clock. I believe the difference is like 15% in the worst case scenario. So essentially what I did was I did a side grade from what I currently have to what I will now have as soon as I switch the parts out. The only difference is this upgrade that I'm doing will boost everything that I'm doing by a fair bit because I'll be able to get a higher clock speed on this processor than what I have on my current one. The one in my desktop right now is usually around 3.5 to 3.8 gigahertz depending on what time of the year it is. Um, like I said, I should be able to get this one to 4 gigahertz. That and it has two more cores. So it should just be an all around boost in performance by at least a fair bit of a margin. Um, on top of that, I think I can get more for the parts that are currently in my computer than what I just spent on this motherboard and processor. Totaling out, that cost me like $230. I should be able to get around that for this, or for what's in there. So I am essentially just swapping parts out, not really losing anything. I might be actually like gaining a little bit, and at the same time getting a fair bit of a nice performance jump. So. Yeah, I need to swap these out. I'm going to do that as soon as I wrap up this bit of the vlog. I don't know if I'll show you guys any more of that. I tried recording an upgrade process or the upgrade process before, but it was just too much footage because it took way too long to upgrade ever to swap everything out and to clean everything that I was like, "No, we're just going to we're we're just going to scrap that." So, um yeah. Lots of cool stuff. The only problem with these upgrades and switching out of parts is that I'm gonna be unable to make videos for a few days, most likely, because I'm selling my 680, like I said. Um, now, I do have a replacement or a, tempor a temporary part to hold me over until I get whatever I decide to get, which is just this little wimpy thing. This is a 4670. This is the first graphics card that was installed in this desktop way back when. Um, this'll be in there until I get either whatever, until I get whatever I want to get, which is most likely going to be an R9290. The only thing holding me back, like I said, is the lack of CUDA on AMD's side, but I think OpenCL should make up for that. And in Premiere, it is supported perfectly fine, in Sony Vegas it's supported, in Final Cut Pro it's definitely supported, so... I don't think I'm going to be missing CUDA, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's also supported in Afterburner, not Afterburner, um, After Effects as far as I'm concerned, not that I use that that much right now, but maybe in the future I'll use it. But yeah, the 290 is definitely a much more economical upgrade because it's maybe 15% slower than a 780 Ti at half the price. So it would kind of be stupid not to go that route. But I'll see what I do. I'm gonna do all the stuff that I need to do on my desktop and then switch out the parts. So see you guys in a bit. Great news. The new motherboard is installed and it seems to be working. It booted, and now I just need to overclock everything. However, over there, my old graphics card is sitting out um, because that's no longer a part of my computer. I, instead, I have a puny 4670 powering just two of the screens because I'm pretty sure it can't power the third one off of the uh, off of it. I'm pretty sure you can only power two screens. So I'm gonna need to place an order for the new graphics card, which is great. Um, and I'll get that one out and sold or out into the world where it belongs now. So. So far, everything's so good. Uh, let's see how high I can push the Z on, and let's see if I can get some nice overclocking going. Hoping to get it to roughly 4.2 to 4.6 gigahertz, so hopefully everything goes well. A little worried, um, because this is, I'm going to be overclocking via the base clock strap instead of the multipliers, um, 
there is a large chance, or there is a potential chance for data corruption. Which is perfectly fine because I'm just going to be running the old version of Windows that I've been running for the last computer on this computer until um, I have some stable overclocking settings. And then when all that's done, I can, um, I can do the thing with the stuff. I can just reinstall Windows and reinstall, or then install OS X and then reinstall Windows at a later time. The only problem I just realized is this computer does not have any IDE ports in it, or the new motherboard does not have any IDE ports in it. So two of my older hard drives don't work in this computer anymore. Um, I'm going to remove those eventually and replace them with better hard drives, but it's a little annoying, but I think I should be able to move all of the stuff that was important. Uh, onto a different hard drive because I still have a one terabyte drive that was originally set up for OS X But now that I have all of this stuff ready to go, we're not going to need that anymore So all's good It's just going to be an unfortunate couple of days while I don't have a good video card So that probably means that most of my recording is going to happen on my laptop if I do record and other than Excuse me other than that desktop will just be used for rendering for the next couple of days, but That's too bad I, I can live without having a 680 for a couple of days, I think. But I'm going to overclock this now. Let's see how well it goes. Going to end off the vlog for the day. Um, just finished packing up everything that needs to be uh, dealt with. So pretty much this motherboard is going to be sold sooner or later. That's going to be going out tomorrow. And I still don't know what I'm going to do with the old motherboard yet. But I'll figure that out. Um, also got trusty old good old Core i7 that I've been using for the better part of three years now, almost four years. I've been using that thing for all of my video production needs, but now there is no need for that anymore. I'm just going to move some stuff out of the way. Um, now that that's all taken care of, I can finally sit down and marvel at my new computer. Well, sort of new. As you can see, that monitor is currently out of commission because I'm using my old graphics card, which is just a 4670. It's ancient. I just placed an order for a 290 uh, about 15 minutes ago. And yeah, now all that I have to worry about is dealing with that. Finally all done for the night. Um, I just finished boxing up everything that needs to be dealt with. Mainly, I have this motherboard and this processor, which are both going to be listed on eBay because I no longer need them. This thing is the old motherboard. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. And that's the graphics card that's going up tomorrow. So, yeah, so far so good in terms of uh, getting everything done. On top of that, um, desktop is up and running for the most part. I need to throw in a new graphics card. Actually, I just ordered an R9 290 about 15 minutes ago. That should be getting in around Monday to Wednesday. Hopefully it won't take too long. Um, and I'm currently running a 4670. Those things are ancient. But I'm currently running one just because I need a graphics card for my desktop for the time being. Um, and because I'm running that, I can't use my third monitor because it only supports two monitors, which kind of sucks. But because of this, I'm going to need to crank down the video production for the next couple of days. Actually, I really haven't done too much in the last week or so. It's just been me using, filling, or me going off the stuff I have in my queue. Also, I'm whispering because people are asleep right now. Don't want to be too loud. Um, so I'm not going to be able to record for the next couple of days unless I do something really lightweight because I have a really weak graphics, graphics card in my computer. Luckily, that'll be solved by getting a not-so-crappy one in the near future. But... I have been messing around with everything, um, let's see, I've been, I, I finished all of the overclocking stuff on here, which is really nice, if we just, uh, go to, like, CPU Z, you can see that I am running at, oh, come on, focus camera, 4.2 gigahertz, um, I can bring this thing up a fair bit more, I have an okay chip, I don't have the best, I don't have the worst, I'm right in the middle, um, this thing can go up to about 4.8 gigahertz, but if I do that, I need to give it a lot of extra power, and it runs really hot, so I don't want to do that, but running at 4.2 gigahertz and seeing, oh, bo, 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 let's just do this, seeing 12 threads in the task manager, oh, that's just wonderful. Also, this doesn't actually report the clock speed correctly, nor does that, this does though, which is really nice, and it runs really cool, so I'm really happy that it's working out really well. Um, I'm really happy with this upgrade. Now I just gotta wait for the new graphics card, and then I will be set for a while. So, 
I'm gonna end off today's vlog. I'm gonna edit all this stuff together. I don't know how well that's gonna go because I still haven't reinstalled Windows on this computer. This is just running the install that I had before I swapped out motherboards. I'm probably gonna do a reinstall soon. Uh, as soon as I get a new, or get that new graphics card, I'll probably do a clean install. Um, I'm a little hesitant to just switch over to OS X because the more I think about it, the more I realize it's going to be really freaking inconvenient because I'm not going to be able to record in OS X. All the recording is going to need to be done in Windows, and then I'm going to need some, to somehow move all the footage over to Mac and, or to OS X, and it's just going to be a lot of trouble. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. But like I said, that's going to be all for now, guys. I do hope you enjoyed this vlog. Sorry that the last bit of it was a bit quieter. Don't want to be too loud. And I'll see you all again next time. So until then, farewell.